Welcome everyone and happy Wednesday. Uh, we'll give it a minute for attendees to join and then we'll get things kicked off here. All right, we'll get things going here. Um, morning, everyone. I'm Dylan Reed, Construction Success Manager here at Fieldwire. Just want to thank everyone for joining us today for our live webinar on Fieldwire for commissioning. Uh, to kick things off, just some housekeeping announcements. Quick reminder, this webinar will be recorded and a copy of the recording along with a copy of the slide deck will be emailed to you at the end of the session. Um, to keep things on track, everyone will be muted throughout the session. So input any comments that you have into the chat and then any questions that you have into the Q&A pane. Um, questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation during our Q&A portion of the, uh, the webinar. That will be the last five minutes. And we'll try to our best to get to all of your questions, but for any questions that we don't address, we'll have one of our experts reach out to you directly. Uh, we all It kind of helps us know how we're doing and it helps us plan for content for upcoming webinars. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce you to your construction expert, Ben Haddock, here at Fieldwire. Take it away, Ben. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dylan. Appreciate it. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and kick things off. Just first want to give a quick introduction to myself. Um, I am the team lead on the construction success team. Been here at Fieldwire now for a few years. So I've seen a lot of different use cases of how Fieldwire is used. Um, I think the commissioning process is a really great fit for Fieldwire, and it's kind of partially why I wanted to focus on this. Um, my background is in civil engineering, worked in water and wastewater, environmental engineering consulting, and also commercial construction um, for a bit as well. Um, pretty much I work with customers just to make sure that Fieldwire is implemented as fast as possible and we're making sure that we're digitizing workflows that might, they might still be using a little bit manually or, or referencing a lot of spreadsheets and like that. We're trying to convert things into Fieldwire and just keep things organized. Um, so with that, I want to kind of run through a quick agenda of how, how this looks. So we're first going to go through a really brief overview of Fieldwire just to make sure that folks that are new kind of have a general sense of what we're looking at. Um, I think a lot of folks that are here on the call have probably seen quite a bit of Fieldwire. So most of, the, most of today will be a demonstration. Um, and then as Dylan mentioned, we're going to have a Q&A towards the end. Um, so think of questions, write them down, put them in the chat, um, or also just follow up with me at the end of this if there's any questions, or even if you want to meet with me and talk about maybe how this could work for your, your system, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to meet with you. All right, so just like a high level overview, just wanted to share kind of, you can think of Fieldwire really as in these three different buckets. On the left hand side, this is just accessing information out in the field offline, being able to view the most recent updates to your drawings, take markups, track your as-builts, view 3D models if you choose to. And then in the middle, we also have this planning and managing work part of Fieldwire. And this is kind of where we're going to focus on commissioning and managing the commissioning process. Uh, this is what we call our task tool. This is where you can sort of collaborate internally with folks, don't have to send back and forth emails. You kind of have it all in one place. And the right-hand side, reporting on progress. This is custom forms. So this is where we're going to track our commissioning forms for the different phases of the process. And then of course you can document photos as well within Fieldwire. So really quick, this is just how you can think of tasks being used really in two different buckets. Either they're proactive and planned, like if you have a list of equipment that you know needs to be commissioned, those can be set up in advance with Fieldwire, or they can be used for inspections, QAQC, inspection, um, device installations, and things like that. Or they can also be reactive too. So issues that come up out on site, maybe you're going through the commissioning process and you notice a issue that needs to be resolved. 
maybe that could be tracked in FieldWire kind of in a more of a reactive sense. On the right-hand side, these are just some statuses that I've put together for the commissioning process, and we'll kind of talk through how this works in the actual project in a minute, but you can see we've got these pre-functional checks, energized inspections, process startups, and then you still have this open issue status as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the demonstration. I'll flip my screen to the FieldWire project. So you should be seeing my project launch page. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. Um, so a couple things to note, you are able to add labels now to your projects. So if you actually click one of these individual tiles here and you select edit label, you can see how you can have these lists of labels just to help you manage and organize the projects that you're working with. In this example, I've added this commissioning project label as orange, just so it makes it really easy to find those kind of on your launch page, especially if you're making, making some custom projects for, for commissioning or other types of projects. Um, another thing to note is we also have this generate reports feature now. So what that lets you do is, um, let's say you've got 10 or 15 projects going at once, and you kind of want to get a data download to have a basically raw information from all those projects that you can kind of keep your executive team up to date on kind of what's going on. So if I select this generate reports button here, you can see how you can create a, a task report across multiple projects at once. So I've selected three commissioning projects, and then you can schedule this to be sent out and add recipients so they can all receive a, uh, basically an Excel spreadsheet. And we'll return, return to that at the end of the presentation of what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna actually jump into a project here. Jump into this commissioning webinar that I've labeled here as commissioning. So I'll open this up. So first things I wanted to note, obviously on the right-hand side, this is where all your drawings are accessed. So you can see I've created various folders for the different disciplines that I'm managing on my project. Loading drawings is really easy. Just select this new plan button. You can drop them into here and FieldWire automatically splits them up into the different tiles and then labels them as the sheet number like this. On the left-hand side, this is really your main na navigation module. So this is gonna look the same kind of regardless of how you access FieldWire, whether it's from web, whether it's from your iPad or phone, you can always get to your plans from this button here. You also have specifications, tasks, photos, forms, and files. Below that, you also have these task categories. So all these are is just how you're choosing to group together the different tasks that are on your project. So for commissioning, what that would mean would be that maybe the different pieces of equipment that you're actually managing the commissioning process on. So you've got your you know, natural gas piping, you have your HVAC equipment, you have your temperature sen sensors, you have your air handler units. And what this allows you to do is you can choose these. So for example, if I just select this air handler unit button, you'll see how it filters on the right-hand side and shows me where the air handler unit equipment is located within my drawings. So you can see on M101, I have two different pieces of air handler equipment that kind of are going through the commissioning process. So next I wanted to jump through the specifications module. Um, so this is actually a new feature that we've recently released. Basically you can load a new spec directly to this and it's gonna split all the spec sections up for you and it'll read the spec number. So if you need to reference maybe your instrumentation and control, control specifications while going through that commissioning process, you can view those within FieldWire now. And it kind of just speeds up the process to split up those spec sections. So definitely try that out, load up your spec book and, and see how it automatically creates that, that spec section for you. So next we're gonna jump over to tasks. And this is where we're kind of gonna talk through what this commissioning process could look like. So I kind of already explained how these categories work and similar to how you can filter them on the plan view, you can also filter them here in the task Kanban view. So if I just wanted to see my air handler unit equipment, I would select that and then just those tasks are gonna pop up. And you'll notice these columns here, these just kind of represent the different phases in the commissioning process that these, these equipment are in. 
So first it starts in this pre-functional check, then it goes to the energize inspection, then it goes to process startup, and then it goes to complete. And if there's issues that come up, they'll be tracked here in this open issues column, and then they can be, re they can be resolved later on. Um, it doesn't have to slow down the commissioning process. It'll just allow you to still track those issues, kind of like you would probably do on, on your normal field wire projects. Um, so a couple things to note too, because all these, these uh, individual tiles represent different pieces of equipment that need to be commissioned, they also have a start and end date. So if you actually reference your calendar view, you'll be able to see kind of when commissioning is planned, when it's supposed to be complete. Um, you can kind of move and see, you know, kind of what's coming up down the pipe. And you also have this analytics view where you can see the different pieces of equipment you have on the project and kind of get a general sense of you know where they are in the process of commissioning and of course you can group these in different ways like you can group them based on assignee so you can see maybe who is overloaded who's underutilized just kind of help you manage your, your resources on your labor resources on your project so if i go back to this view um, one thing I wanted to note, if I were to pull up one of these pieces of equipment, this exhaust fan one, you'll notice it's got a checklist here, but it's also tied to the specific location on the drawings. So if I open that up, it'll just zoom me in directly to that exhaust hood and exhaust fan on the project. All right, so what does this kind of all look like? Um, and how does the, the commissioning piece of it kind of fit together? So I'll do, what I'll do is I'll actually open up one that's kind of gone through the whole flow. So it went from pre-functional check all the way to verified. And I'll just open one up just so you can kind of see kind of what it looks like after it's finished. So I'll go ahead and open up this air handler unit task. So this is an air handler unit that needed to go through a full commissioning process. I was able to attach a checklist that kind of just gives a general framework to make sure when this is assigned to Ben, he knows exactly what steps he needs to take to go through and, and complete the commissioning process. So you can see you need to complete a few different forms, the pre-functional checklist form, the energized inspection form, and the process startup test form. And then it has you make sure to, you know, add relevant markups and make sure you're getting the sign offs that you need for the equipment. So you can see here, there's those three forms that are logged, your pre-functional check, your hot inspection, your process system startup. And you also have all the back and forth messages too. So you've got your progress photos, you have the you know, inspection and or you, you've got your operations and maintenance manual that the team can reference. And then also just any progress photos that are kind of related to this. Those can also be referenced and then mark up to help with communications during, during that final testing process. Um, and of course you can add any back and forth messages, maybe communicating where you are in the process. And of course, include any markups too. So you can add a lot of other, other data as well. So files from your computer, other forms you might wanna reference and kind of other, other hyperlinks like crop plans as well. So something I wanted to explain um, on the right-hand side, this is where you're able to add all the attributes for this. In this case, of course, it's in the verified status because it's a completed task. You can also categorize it, as I mentioned, based on the type of equipment that you're commissioning. So in this case, it's air handler units. It's got a location too, so you can specify exactly which room this is located. It's got a start and end date, so it shows up on that calendar. And because I included a commissioning checklist, you'll see that it automatically tagged it as a commissioning process here. So that just helps later on so you can pull a report on all your commissioning tasks. And you also have these watchers here. So if you need to include maybe the commissioning agent, other superintendents, just to make sure that they are kept in the loop with this process, you can add them as watchers. And then I've also added these attributes to make sure that we're collecting specific information for the equipment here in the task. So you can 
choose a manufacturer. You can enter the equipment number or asset ID. Then you can even add like a serial number or something like that. And these can all be really customized. So depending on the type of information you need to capture, you can modify them to capture that. So if I actually select this little manage wheel here, this is where you can pull up all those attributes. And you can actually hide ones that are maybe irrelevant. Um, so maybe if you, you don't really want the locations, you can click that button and it'll basically remove them from the attribute list, or you can add additional attributes too. You can see this one here for manufacturer. It's actually a list um, that I created so that folks in the field, they can just pull from a drop down. They don't have to guess kind of, you know, or they don't have to you know, manually enter it. And you can actually add up to 20 different attributes, which is kind of nice. So just to show you kind of what one of these forms looks like, um, I'll just open up this air handling unit one pre-functional check. So open it up. This is custom built, also capturing the equipment information, allowing either the commissioning agent or whoever is managing this inspection to go through all these steps. You can go through and check them off, add your own notes on the right hand side, noting any defects or problems as you've gone through it, attaching relevant photos, kind of keeping the team up to date with as it's going through this inspection you're communicating everything as best as possible. And then of course you can sign it off at the end. Um, you can sign it as somebody else or you can sign it off as yourself as well. So something that's kind of nice is if you're going through this process here and maybe you're finding an issue or maybe there's some cracking um, in the external casing or something like that, you can keep track of those by Obviously, just noting it here in the task bar of, of something that is that you identified, but you could also create like a related task and just say cracking in casing, just so that you're keeping track of those problems that come up during the uh, inspection process, and those will be like saved in the uh, in the in the issues column. So something that's nice is once this has gone through the full process and you've kind of gone through startup, you really have this nice record of information that you can share out. So if I go to share here and select export as a PDF, what that's gonna do is it'll just create a really nice report summary of this piece of equipment where you can reference those relevant forms like the pre-functional checks, your energized commissioning form and your process startup form. And then it gives a kind of an overview of where it is in the process. So in this case, obviously it's the verified one. So it's completed and you can see all the back and forth messages and relevant photos. Um, and if you were to send this out maybe to like an owner or a general contractor or something like that, they would be able to reference all these links and open it up. So if they selected this hyperlink here, they would be able to automatically view the form or the energized commissioning form, which is maybe a little bit different. So this is of course collecting different information, but it's just necessary to complete commissioning for, for this piece of equipment. So these forms, you know, I built them out, um, but you can customize them depending on, you know, your project, your team, um, and it's pretty, pretty customizable depending on the information that you need to, to capture. If I go back to this task here, one thing I wanted to note, I'm going to X out here. You might be asking, okay, how do I how do I get all this set up? Um, of course, you can build all these pre-functional pieces of equipment individually, but that might not be super convenient. So what you can actually use is this import tasks feature. And this allows you to build all those tasks kind of in bulk. So you can create up to 200 at a time. And the way you can do that is you can create your own spreadsheet. For example, something like this. You can add all the equipment that needs to go through the commissioning process, maybe from like a, a master equipment list or something like that. And as long as the headers match that task importer, for example, the manufacturer, the equipment number, you can even add the checklist. All you need to do is basically copy
and paste them into the importer. And you can see that you know, the checklist has been added, the manufacturer has been added, you've got the title of the equipment and the status that it's starting in. And if I select import tasks, you'll see that these are all gonna just sort of be built in advance. So you can really get your project set up with all the equipment that you need to, to check. So for example, here, all these are created. And if I were to open one up, you'll see it's kind of got my commissioning process sort of ready for me. So I can go through, and here it's asking me to complete my pre-functional checklist form. So I'll go to this little attachment button, select my form, new form, go to my pre-functional checklist, select create, and that'll actually attach that form here to this task, and it'll be ready to fill out. So then you'll kind of keep moving through that process, selecting to the next status, and you'll walk through until it's finally verified. And then you have that nice sort of package of all the information in one place. So something that's really nice and I wanted to talk a little bit about is the ability to generate reports. Um, so obviously if you select this generate reports button, you'll see you can create your um, fully commissioned air handler unit report or your issue tracking report. All this does is it allows you to consolidate all those commissioning items into one place. So you can have this nice sort of overview of all your tasks that have been verified, all your commissioning items that have been verified. And this could be sent as kind of like a progress report to yourself internally or to, or to your owner or something like that. Similarly for issues, you know, all those issues that you found during the commissioning process, you could also create an issues log report that you can send out to the different contractors that need to resolve those um, just as final kind of like punch items that you find during the commissioning process. So one thing I just wanted to mention too real quick is let's say you've got an existing project you can just add a status for commissioning here. Um, and it's kind of the same idea, um, except in this case, you know, maybe you, you've got an existing process. You can just add the checklist and then kind of manage that process within just a single status as well. It's a little bit less nice visually, but at least you have that commissioning status. So one thing I wanted to go through as well is going back to the project launch page. Oops, back to launch page here. I mentioned that generate reports button. So what that looks like is it allow you to pull a report of all the task data that we generated. So I'll go ahead and pull that and kind of show you what that looks like. So this creates a really large database of information across all those commissioning projects that I've created where it gives a really nice overview of the status of each equipment, what phase in the commissioning process it's in, who it was assigned to, when it was completed and last updated. And this is data that could be really, really helpful to analyze kind of information across really all of your projects. So something else I wanted to talk through was because I created those commissioning forms, uh, and maybe I wanna make sure that they're something that can be referenced across all of my projects, you just wanna make sure it gets pushed to the account template page so if I select this templates here, account forms, you'll see that that pre-functional checklist form, the energized commissioning form, and the process startup form, that can be now accessed from every project because I've published it as an account form template. Excellent, so that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. I wanna make sure we have some time for q and I know we kind of went through a lot of information. Um, so with that, any questions? <clears throat> awesome, thanks, Ben. Um, we got some questions coming in here. First one is, when are we gonna be able to get specifications on mobile? We, re we really need these in the field of mobile when questions come up. Definitely, so specifications on mobile is absolutely on the product roadmap. Um, I would have to get back to you with a very specific timeline of when it will be released, but from what I understand, it's going to be um, coming early on next quarter. Yeah, I think it's or next 
for coming out Q1, sometime, sometime Q1 of 2023. Great, thanks. Uh, Cool, and then I have another one here. Uh, what do you mean custom built templates? And I think that's in reference to forms. Uh, and then I think he actually followed up, how much is done by the user? Great question. So I'll just actually jump back into the project and I'll open up this commissioning webinar job. Um, so we also have this separate forms tab here. And this is where all those forms you create will just automatically be filed. Um, these form templates, I built out custom, which you can do really, really easily by just clicking new form and then new template and creating new. And you can basically build them from scratch. We have a custom template builder where um, you could add sections, add tables and things like that. So actually, if I wanted to select this template here, and adjust it you can actually go through and add your you know the specific information that you might want to capture here in this module builder um, it doesn't take too much time maybe 15 minutes or so once you get get um, comfortable with it but we'd be happy to to meet with you to help help you kind of get there for these forms perfect that answered another question that someone had if the pre-functional checklists are already prepared can they be modified and yep they can be um let's see uh, are the photo numbers in the report added automatically or manually so the photo numbers so all these tasks are gonna be numbered automatically when you create them. Um, I, think I, think, that's... I think she, like in reference to the reports where the photos are like numbered on the report, those are gonna be automatic based on when they're uploaded. Yep, exactly. So these are just numbered exactly what Dylan said, just in the in the order that they've been up uploaded. You can't you can't adjust the, uh, the photo numbers. Um, what you can do is you can mark them up though. So if you, you know, if I were to open up one of these tasks and you maybe wanted to number it, you could add your own text to them. And you can also tag them too. So if you if you want to tag them with a specific number, you can add a tag to it. And then if you actually go back to your photos tab, you can then search for those tags. So it kind of makes it easier to, to find them if you need to. Uh, but the numbering is is automatic. Perfect. Um, and then on the attributes, the custom task attributes, is it project specific or can it be set for like globally for like all projects? Great question. So right now it's project specific. Um, you have to build them out for each project, but we are going to be adding that functionality to Fieldwire. Um, what it will eventually be is on this home page when you create a new project. So let's say I create a new job. We'll name it, you know, commissioning or something. You can clone a project and eventually we'll be able to pull over um, those custom attributes it's just not available right now for new projects but you can uh, copy over the form templates to new projects perfect thank you um uh when importing tasks is there a way to have them import directly onto a plan yes so great question if i actually jump back to the project um, in fact, maybe I'll just go back to this spreadsheet. You'll see I've linked these to a plan and you can also add positions on the plan. So if you kind of know that maybe, for example, if you add 50-50, these pins will just be dropped directly in the middle of the drawing. Um, so if I open up that one here, this air handle unit task that was created from the importer, it'll just zoom you directly to that location. Um, in this case, I was basically dragging and dropping them to the locations. 
just because it's not easy to get that percentage super dialed. Um, but it is it is possible if you if you um, are able to to get those percentages. But usually we just recommend people add them to the plan and then drag them and drop them into their locations. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ben. I think that wraps it up for us on timing. Um, just a reminder to everybody, there's a quick uh, post webinar survey that'll pop up when you exit the webinar. If you guys don't mind filling that out, we really appreciate it. And then you'll also get a copy of the recording and slide deck. And then any other questions that we didn't get to, we'll have somebody reach out to you directly uh, and answer those questions. Uh, thanks everybody and see you next time. Thanks everyone.